Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm very excited. Hi, welcome to Live at Five. It's February 22nd. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Matt Roden. And we have a guest today. We're here with Caitlin Gallup today. Hello, what up? Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Are you ready for our guest? I'm very excited about this <gasps> guest. You guys, Marisha Wallace. All the way from London's West London, End, from the from Dream Girls is here to talk. She flew in just for this. She flew in <laughs> for live at five. I'm so honored, aren't you honored? We flew her here, yeah. Yeah, we. First oh, class. Yeah, we did it. Oh, first <laughs> class. Uh, but first, we have today's top five. There's some news. All right. The first thing is, Dear Evan Hansen is going abroad. Yes, it is. So we got news today yes. that Dear Evan Hansen, they're, they're mounting a production in Canada. Is that abroad? I uh, guess that's abroad. Technically abroad, abroad right? Because you, you need a passport to get to Canada, True. don't you? True. Um, at, so this, this production is going to be at Toronto's Royal Alexandra Theatre. Uh, beginning in March 2019. We don't have dates. We don't have casting. We know that Michael Greif is going to direct it again. But... I'm, I mean, I have a feeling Canadian audiences will be, like, very into I think they'll the get show. it. You know, they walk among us, the Canadians. They do. They walk among us. Yeah, that's <laughs> they do. true. They do. All right, number two. We got more casting, which I'm very, 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 very excited about for Jesus Christ Superstar Live on NBC. Well, Caitlin Gallup is excited I because am. this is some so good excited. casting. Some very good casting. So we have two-time Tony nominee Brandon Victor Dixon will be playing Judas. This is the role of Jesus Christ Superstar. We know the title role is already John Legend. We already know that Sarah Bareilles is playing Ma Mary Magdalene, so it takes nothing away from them. Mm -hmm. But we also have Norm Lewis. I just had to say it in that way. Norm Lewis is going to play giddy. Caiaphas. Looks like Caiaphas. <laughs> and Ben Daniels at, from Les Liaisons Dangereuses will be playing Pontius Pilate. Jason Tam. <laughs> Marisha Wallace is, is having a moment. Her mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll play Peter. Jin Ha from M. Butterfly. Oh, yeah. And Hamilton will play Annis. Swedish rocker Eric Gronwell will be playing Simon. Okay, so it's David Laveau, who's a five-time Tony nominee, is directing this live event, NBC, April 1st. What else has he directed? What did he, what were the... Like a Fiddler on the Roof, a million things, okay. a million things. And because um, I just want to say Fiddler, because that's like Jewish. Yeah, Jewish. right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, somehow. This is Easter Sunday, April 1st, on NBC, live Jesus Christ Superstar. That's good. You watch it, you live tweet it, you have those songs in your head for two weeks. And there's going to be a lot of like Broadway people in the ensemble, too. Like, I feel like, you know what I mean? You'll You're just recognize it. all the faces. Also, Alice Cooper is Harry. Oh, yeah. right. Right? It's <laughs> gas from the gallery. Dying. And more um, casting news. Santino Fontana is joining Hello, Dolly! in a brief run playing um, Cornelius Hackle. Yeah, that's true. So Gavin Creel hurt his back. I think he had surgery like today or mm -hmm. something like He's that. having surgery. Um, and so we found out that Santino Fontana, who we know from Cinderella. Frozen. Frozen. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Oh, that's right. I, f I literally forgot that he was like in My subway ride this morning. Frozen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see him on the subway all the time, <laughs> we don't you? Near each other. Uh, yeah, so he's replacing Gavin um, for a short run, a limited engagement starting uh, March, March 13th. 13th. March 13th. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he'll be great. It's great I, casting, and Gavin it said a nice quote about him that he's going to be wonderful, yes. so he's got the stamp of approval. And that's all we need. That's all we really want. In more news, we have um, a slew of really fancy people are going to be directing stuff <laughs> for um, City Center's Off Center program. First of all, City Center's Off Off was Off Center is so good. Okay, so there's City Center's Encores. Which Don't get is me like, confused with what's what. Cause I'm not gonna be able. To that's what I'm questions. saying. So City Center Encores is like what the main. It's like the main thing. It's a main stage. So let's talk about who's gonna be there. Okay. I'm gonna do this in reverse order of how this was written for me. Okay. Okay. This is reverse <laughs> chronological order because we like that. Because I have to start with the most important person yeah, yeah, in yeah, my yeah, life, yeah. Savion Glover. You guys. Marisha Wallace just gasped. Again. Tony winner, Sam and Gallover, will be doing Don't Bother Me, I Can't Code. That is like my motto like, tagline. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly that's, a 19, that's from 1971. This is old school. So he's going to be doing that one. We also have Kate Wariski, who just did Sweat on Broadway. She also did Lynn Nottage's Ruined. Mm -hmm. That's what she's known for. She's doing Songs for a New World, which is, of course, Jason Robert Brown. That one's the first one, June 27th through the 30th. Then... Ken Russ Schmoll will helm Gone Missing. This is the Michael Friedman one, July oh, yeah. 11th and 12th. So I'm just look at this. Kate Wariski, Ken Russ Schmoll, and Savian Glover. I'm just saying. It's all lit. will be making their city center directorial debuts. Very exciting. Cool. It's fun. What else? And finally, um, we put up a slew of brand new spring previews um, about to round out our last one tomorrow. But I hope you all have been enjoying it. 
Yeah, so are fun. today went up today Children of a Lesser God went That's up. That's right. We talked to Joshua well, Jackson and Lauren Ridloff. Uh and they're lovely. Like and the This is a Tony winning play by Mark Maddow. This is a and you got to hang out with them this I, morning. This morning, this morning. They had their first rehearsal. They have some serious chemistry, those two. Then they're just like the kindest human beings. Very generous and respectful of um, each other. And we put up yesterday Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Okay, I'm a little bit in love with these stars. Are you, it's, do, it's do, you, do you have your tickets? Do you have your tickets? No, is the question. To Ms. Wenny. Am I saying it correctly? Uh, she, she is. Uh, these Harry Potter people are so good and smart and just check that one out. You just like hear their accents and you're just like, yes, I believe everything you say. Yes, we believe the Brits. Also... <laughs> We want to say a very special happy first preview. Happy first preview to Frozen. Frozen. On the B-Way. Another show that we did in our spring preview. That's, right. so that's how I tied tied that in there. That's right. Um, that's that's all the that's news. That's the news today, yeah. That's it. That's the top five. So I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, why don't you get out of here? Get lost. Marisha Walls will be right here in a minute. All right, let's get to know our guest a little bit better. So Marisha Wallace was born and raised in a small town in North Carolina, but the small town never held her back and she moved to the big city. After a year of touring with the Book of Mormon, she made her Broadway debut and was cast as the fortune teller in the original cast of Aladdin. She then moved on to another Casey Nicola classic, Something Rotten, before heading to Denver Center to take on the role of Effie White in Dreamgirls. Not long after, though, London called and she moved to the West End production of Dreamgirls, where she is currently starring as Effie White. And now, here's Beth and Marisha. Round of applause, please. Yes. Yes. Welcome, yes. welcome, Marisha Wallace. Hi. Thank you for flying in exclusively for Live at Five. <laughs> Just for this moment. First of all, I did, I did see Dreamgirls in the West End, and oh. I loved it. Now, I saw Amber Riley, yes. who preceded you in this role. Yes. This production, also a Casey Nicola classic, as Caitlin mm -hmm. Gallup yeah. just said. It's Casey Nicola This is Nicola such a everywhere. gorgeous production. Yeah. Tell me how you're doing. I am fantastic. I'm on vacation right now, or holiday, as we say. Yeah, I love that your American accent stole American. It's still that I went home to North Carolina, so I got my Southern back. You know, it was kind of getting <laughs> watered out, but it's back now. <laughs> so how long have you been in London? I've been there since December 2016, so over a year now. You're practically British now. I know. Do I got a British, a British bank account now. You do? I'm fancy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Put those pounds in there. I know. Have you had in. tea with the Queen yet? I don't. I haven't, but she lives up the street. I live yeah. in Trafalgar Square. Oh, it's crazy. Really? I didn't even know people could live there. That's not a place where a lot of people... That's no. like saying I live in Times Square, which now people no. do, but they didn't used to. No, I was literally... I'm like, where am I going to stay? In the Watchtower? Or like, in the there are lions <laughs> and fountains and tourists. It's beautiful. Oh but it's like really at the entrance to right. her... That's right. To Buckingham Palace. Her home, yeah. So one I, of her homes. One of her <laughs> homes. Hopefully, I haven't gone to ask her for sugar, but, you know. <laughs> I'm sure she would <laughs> happily, happily. <laughs> so let's talk about this role. This is such a juicy... I cried throughout Dreamgirls. Oh, yes. I didn't think I was going to cry, but I couldn't stop crying. Oh, people can't. People it's can really an all emotional. The emo all the emotions, yeah. And, of course, you have to sing the most famous song. Yes. Do you know what that is, people? And I'm telling you. Do we know? Do you know? Do you know? This is such a great role for you. Now, you did this when you were younger. Yes. I, the first time I did it, I was 21. It was my first role right out of college. And I was like, okay, why not? And sure. I had been singing those songs forever because you just sing those at talent shows because you know you're going to win. <laughs> so I was singing that and be like, oh, well, I can win like $100. You know, I can win like $100 here, <laughs> $200 there. And, you know, at the county fair, you would sing, you know, those <laughs> songs. And then so I was like, well, I can sing the songs. Let me see if I can do the whole show. And then it was like a, a month run, I think. And I did it. And Did you always think you would do this role? Yeah. I thought I did. so. I, I did. thought so. I it's did. such a good role for you. Yeah. Okay. We have to talk about your association with Casey Nicola. Yeah. Because this guy, <laughs> this, this man, you've done so many different shows for him. I know. I think this is our fifth production. Tell me about when you first met. Um, well, I was in for, I went to an open call for Book of Mormon. Wow, dreams come true. Yeah, I went to an open call and um, I got called back, but I was doing Oklahoma, an all black version of Oklahoma out in uh, Portland. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't go to the call back. And I had just got this new agent. I was like, please get me back in, please get back in. And then they got me back in and then I got through all the rounds and that's when I met Casey in the dance call. And right, right from there, it was just like, we you connected. Just hit it off. Yeah. We hit it off. And then even in Book of Mormon, because this was the time before 
he would he puts up he doesn't put up the tours now but he used to put yeah. up the tours back in the back day before he was back Casey the, before he was so famous you know <laughs> now he just sends the people out to do the, the hard work so then you know he's just like i'm gonna do broadway be cute <laughs> so back then he would do tours and then so we were out in uh denver so we got to hang out and like you know get to know each other personally and we just we just get each other we have the same kind of sense of humor and he was like, I want to put you in everything I'm in. And he okay. did I'll not take that. disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For, yeah. Before you played Effie White, you played Eggie White. Yeah. That is me. Not I'm not misspeaking. That's a real yes. thing. Let's yes. talk about that. Yes. Well, <laughs> Eggie White came three days before we opened. Something so this is rotten. something rotten, exclamation yes. point, something rotten. Tell yes. me about that moment. That's a, so a priceless moment. We were doing... If you guys seen something rotten, there's this big omelet number. The show's closed now, so it's fine. I'm not giving yeah, anything we're not away. Spoiling. You know, it's, it's on tour, but you'll be fine. Um, so there's this omelet and egg number where we come out as tap dancing eggs, like huge eggs, you know, and then we come out as an omelet. And Casey was like, "I don't know why people like this number. I feel like there's something missing." And I was like, "Oh, I don't know. I, I think it's good." And he was like, "I got it." And I was like, "What?" He's like. <laughs> I want you to sing, and I'm telling you, inside of the egg, pop out of the egg, and then sing it. Do you feel this was your audition for Dream Girls in London? I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought he was kidding. I was like, okay, you're being funny. <laughs> Next day, I walk into the rehearsal where, you know, you rehearsed before the preview, and um, the music director hands me the sheet music, and it says, and I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm not going to be an omelet. And I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> And then I sang it for everyone, and everyone in the whole cast was like, yeah! Oh, my goodness. And then we did it, and literally people were falling out of their seats. Exactly. Laughing. And then that was the story of Eggie White, three days before opening. I love that you were Eggie before you were Effie. I know. And there's people who come to the stage door and was like, I saw you as Eggie White, <laughs> and Will I you feel sign proud. Egg? <laughs> Will you sign my egg? Will you sign egg? <laughs> Bring an egg to the stage door at this point. Please, award. yes. Um, so tell me about London audiences, because they don't get to see this kind of, this is a no. debut of Dream Girls in London, right? Yes, they've That's been trying to get it there for years, and it just didn't work out. There was like other times that they wanted to do it, and it never worked out, and now it's the time. It's amazing. Yeah. The audience are going nuts. So I was told, because by other people who worked on the West End, that people in the West they're End are reserved. very popular, right. you know, they're very pulled, and you know, they don't. They don't make a lot of noise. They're just until the but end. But this is dream girls. This is yeah, different. Yeah, until the end. But no, these people are going crazy. Like, we had to put signs out to tell people not to sing, dance, scream, what? run around. People are going crazy. They cra know the music from the movie, they probably. They know the music. But the emotion of the show yeah. makes people go crazy. Like, they literally want to stand up. They want to scream. They want to do things. So, I, I mean, I was like, just let them go. I'm used to, you know, a black church where people holler yeah, just screaming. So I'm let like, it all out, everyone. just go get your life. But, you know, <laughs> that's, but that's me. But, yeah, they're going, they're still standing ovations. It's been over a year. That's amazing. Later, so you were Amber Riley's standby. Yes. And uh, now Amber has moved on, and yeah. you've taken over the role. Yes. How does it feel to own it now and, ha and play it more often? It's, it's such, an, it's incredible. I feel like I really found my version of this part. And it's That's just, important to do. It's very important. And because the role is has been everybody knows Effie. Like everybody yeah. knows her. But I was like, how can I make her be new to someone, you know, to even to people who've seen it and also to people who've never seen it? And I think what I've done is made her real. And I wanted yeah. to give make her three D, not just like a caricature of the Effie that, you know, that everyone knows, but to make her so real that you would think she was your friend or your sister or your, you know, she's someone that actually lives in this world. And it's been incredible, the response, because people come up to me, they're like, we want to be your friend. We want <laughs> we, we, we just want to give you a hug. We want to talk to you. Well, you she's know. so vulnerable. She's so vulnerable. And I feel like she was always kind of painted as kind of this just, I'm nasty, mean girl, but right. she's not. She's such. She's so many layers. Yeah, she's been hurt. Like she's got self-esteem issues, and then when she conquers all that, it's just beautiful. It it's is. a beautiful show. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's all gorgeous. right, tell us a little trick, or a little hint, yeah, or something we should know if we come to London. Oh, because I'm definitely booking another to see trip the show. Oh yes. Okay, I would say. Or just from living there for so long now. Oh my goodness, I don't know a tip or a trick. 
I would say learn the lingo because you, There's some words you might be you asking for some things and you don't know what you're asking for. Or you, <laughs> you say you want to go to the bathroom, but it's the toilet. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the words. Or you say, oh, they say it's interval, but it's intermission. Or they so, say stalls. Or they say stalls. And they mean orchestra. I was seats. confused for like the first three months. I was like, what are you guys talking about? I don't know where to go. I'm lost. I don't know. It, so I would say learn the lingo. I would also say book your tickets now because this show is selling out for good it's reason. selling out and i know you have some fans on facebook here who have some you questions do. so you definitely Caitlin, do. What are some questions yes. all right alec would like to know and i'm gonna paraphrase this a little bit yes did amber riley or any other effies give you tips or do you take any inspiration from former effies walking into this role yes um i think i've studied like every single one i've seen i saw amber i saw you know, I saw in the movie and I saw Jennifer YouTube, Holiday. Jennifer Holiday. And Jennifer Holiday was really like one that I really took because she's from the same kind of place that I'm yeah, from. Yeah. Like from the black church and from and where she you can stir emotion the way that you do when you sing in church. Mm -hmm. And that was something I really looked at as the, you know, the base, the foundation of the role. Um but yeah, Amber I think updated it which I liked yeah. which made it a little more now so I got to mix the new and the old just by watching them and then I got to put my own stamp on it and so yeah I definitely took inspiration from all of them yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah George has noticed that there are quite a few Americans in the cast of dream girls right now do you all stick together do you mix <laughs> around with the Brits what we is are, it like we backstage? all mix around we know we mix it around I mean it's kind of cool to have three American dreams like all the it's, dreams yeah are it's American great. And um, that's really, really cool. You comment on the Brits American accents when they do it? Yes, they do. And they try to comment on our British I accents bet. that are not good. So <laughs> <laughs> but I do get them to help me like with auditions and stuff if I have to do British accents. But in the show, everyone has an American accent. <laughs> yes. No, but they're great. Uh, everyone is so cool. Our Jimmy Early is British. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a Marty's British. Like So there's been a couple of But the dreams British. are American. All the dreams are American right now. Uh, but yeah, we stick together, and because we're kind of all there by ourselves, we don't have our families mm -hmm. there, so we try to, you know, make Thanksgiving. It. Yes, we have Thanksgiving. <laughs> Certain we're, holidays that the Brits don't understand. They don't have that, <laughs> but they understand the food when we make it. They're like, okay, we'll eat that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> So that's good. Yeah, we do stick together. We do. That makes sense. Justin would like to know, do you like drinking tea? And if so, what are your favorite kinds of tea to drink? Oh. You have an array in I, London. You know, tea, I do like tea, but I'm still a coffee. I'm like, I need to be yeah. wired up, you know. <laughs> the tea is cute, it's you know, cute. for a time. <laughs> <laughs> the tea is very cute. I mean, I, I love a chai tea moment. Chai moment, yes. And I have gone to tea, high tea. You should go to Sketch if you haven't been there. That's See, a I need fierce. to have the Tea the place. Tips, yeah. Um, you also should go to where else have I had tea? There was an Alice in Wonderland tea that I went to, and it had like all the Alice in Wonderland stuff flying out. That sounds know, trippy. Cards. It was great. <laughs> I loved it. So yeah, I do like to eat chai tea. That's my chai jam. tea. Yep. Chai tea. And last question. We get this one a lot. Um, yeah. Are there any really good onstage mishap stories you can share with us? Oh my God, so Effie many bloopers. mishaps. Okay, so you know in the beginning where we have the wigs on and she says turn the wigs around. Right. So when the wigs are on, we can't put pins in them because we have to turn the wigs around because mm -hmm. then we go off and put pins in them. And this was like one of my first nights, I think, because uh -oh. I learned the show in like five days and then I was on. So I had to put on wigs that I already had. I had to like get my clothes altered, whatever. So that the wig didn't fit quite great, but I was like, okay, it's fine. So then I walk up to Curtis and he, you know, he says, hey, miss, I think you look great. And I'm trying to be like, you know, saucy and slide <laughs> over there. I slide over to him and then I turn my head to give him some sass. Uh -oh. Honey, that wig hit the ground. <laughs> It was on the floor. The audience was dying laughing. And then I pick up the wig and I shook it at him <laughs> because I was like, I got to do something with the wig. So I shake the wig at him. And then I forget that I got to put the wig back on. Uh -oh. So the wig was like a little poof. wonky. It was like a chicken on my head. But that was, you know. It's the story. That's the story. That's yeah. how bloopers go. All right, well, we have to go, but let's we talk do. before we go. Tell people how they can find you. They can find me on, at Marisha Wallace on all Instagram, the Instagram, Facebook, you know, Twitter. All you the social you know, media. The so follow me. I do great Insta stories that are very funny. And get your <laughs> album. And get my album, Soul Holiday. So I know good. it's not Christmas, but it does have a version of I'm Changing on it from Dreamgirls that you guys will so love. So good. Yeah. It's always Christmas. 
It's always it's Christmas. Always, but people are listening to it right now. Someone sent me a video yesterday. I was like, why are you listening to Christmas music right now? They're like, I, I, I don't know. I you love know it. I just, I, <laughs> in the I just have to listen to in it now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming, Marisha. Thank Caitlin, you. Take us out. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You can watch Live at 5 every weekday live at 5 p.m. on Broadway.com's Facebook page. And if you're a fan of podcasts or want another way to consume this show, you can subscribe to the Live at 5 podcast wherever you get your podcast. Join us tomorrow when we are joined by Once on This Island's Alex Newell. Um, the same day that the Once on This Island cast recording is out. Um, awesome. Join us side. live in the studio tomorrow. Happy Thursday, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah.